All right. Six period, multiples of three. So we start at number three. Oh, man, A, B, C, and D going on down here. In the XY plane, the terminal ray of an angle in standard position intersects the unit circle at the point with the coordinates A, B. Okay, so there's A, B. So it's telling me that the X length is A and the Y length is B. That's another way to think of that. The terminal ray of a second angle in standard position intersects the circle at the point with coordinate C, D. If the measure of the second angle is twice the measure of the first angle, so we we'll just kind of eyeball this. There's the first angle. The second angle would be over here somewhere. What are the coordinates of C and D in terms of A and B? Um, well, let's see. I don't think you can just double A and double B. I think that's out. So B is out. Measure the second angle is twice the measure of the first angle. I don't think you can just make them negative. That would be like if you rotated the other way. So A is out. A squared plus B squared, A squared minus B squared. Uh, 2AB must be right because it's the only one left. So interesting. Um, I think what this is going for is the sine of 2 theta is, wait, not the sine of 2 theta, the sine of one angle plus another angle. Oh, so now I need to call these angles something. Uh, x and y the sine of x plus y no I do want 2 theta because it's twice this this is theta this is 2 theta so the sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta oh now I realize what's going on the sine of theta, so here's theta, the sine of that angle is B, and the cosine of that angle is A. So the sine of 2 theta is 2AB, but the sine of 2 theta is the height of the second angle. Okay, so there's the height of the second angle is 2AB. To get the x value of the second angle, that would be the cosine of the second angle. It is cosine squared minus sine squared. So cosine of the first angle is A. Sine of the second angle is B. Cosine of 2 theta, though, that is C. problem to start with there. How did you know to just use sine 2 theta? Because I knew this was theta and this was 2 theta. And as soon as I saw twice the angle, then I was thinking, all right, they're probably using a 2 theta or something or other. Number six. function is given by cosine of x times 1 plus tangent squared, which of the following expressions is equivalent to f of x. Uh, 1 plus tangent squared, that looks, <coughs> that looks familiar. I know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Uh, if I want the tangent one to show up, tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. Remember the, the tan ones are sexy if that's if that helps. That dumb thing. So 1 plus tangent squared is the same thing as secant squared. So in place of 1 plus tangent squared, I'm going to put secant squared. Um, not there yet. 
Let's see. Secant is 1 over cosine. It's 1 over cosine squared. Which, oh, it's not it exactly, but 1 of the cosines will cancel. And 1 over cosine is the same thing as secant. Which means I maybe could have saved myself a step if I had to replace cosine with 1 over secant. I would have got there a little faster, but that's okay. Again, you definitely got to know sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. After that, you can figure out the others. Number 9. The cosine function is a horizontal translation, left-right translation, of the sine function with sine of x plus 2 equals cosine of x. Okay? Which of the following identities can be used to verify this identity by direct substitution and evaluation without additional algebraic manipulation? Well, that's a weird question, but sine of x plus 2 uh, sounds like the sum identity for sine. Because it would be sine of the first one, cosine of the second one, plus cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. And in fact, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So, yeah, that would be it. Some identity for cosine, but there's not a sum cosine going on. Nothing's being doubled, so those are out. So, kind of a weird question, but given the answer choices, it's got to be A. Number 12. The table gives ordered pairs that are solutions to which of the following? Okay, well, I guess let's just try the first one. Y is cosine of X. So that means negative pi over 2 is cosine of negative 1. It's like, no, that's definitely not right. Negative pi over 2 is inverse cosine of negative 1. Okay, well now we're, now we're talking. But the inverse cosine of negative 1 um, cosine is negative 1 over at pi, not negative pi over 2. So that one's out. Sine of x, again, that one's backwards, I think. So let's try inverse sine of x. Negative pi over 2 equals inverse sine of negative 1. So again, that's asking where is the sine equal to negative 1? Well, at negative pi over 2. I suppose we could check a few more if we wanted to make sure. But I already ruled out the other three, so I feel good about that being my answer. Fifteen. Function f is given by this thing. <coughs> For what value of x between pi and 2 pi? Okay, that's kind of a weird interval to look in. That means I'm only looking on the quadrants 3 and 4 for where 5 plus 7 cosine x equals 0. So cosine of x equals negative 5 sevenths. So that happens in the third and, and second quadrant. Right, cosine is negative on the left side. If I do inverse cosine of negative 5 sevenths, that would get me this angle. That's not the angle I'm looking for. So it, it's a correct answer, but it's not between pi and 2 pi. So I can go ahead and throw out A. Pi plus arc cosine of 5 sevenths. 
pi plus arc cosine of 5 sevenths. Well, arc cosine of 5 sevenths, that's positive. Let's come back to that one. Here's arc cosine of negative 5 sevenths. If we add pi to that, then we'll end up in quadrant 4. Arc cosine negative 5 sevenths plus pi. So I don't want that one. The other two involve arc cosine of 5 sevenths. But arc cosine of 5 sevenths would be in the, whoops, would be, would be in the first quadrant. That's definitely not what I want. But if I wanted to land at that same kind of reference angle in the third quadrant, this is the one I'm, I'm wanting. That's my answer. Then if I added pi to that, that's the one I would want. So if I go arc cosine of 5 sevenths, add pi, that would land me in the third quadrant. That's a really weird question. It's not how I would get there. If I wanted the one in the third quadrant, I would do a negative arc cosine of negative 5 sevenths. That would be going the wrong way, but then you could add 2 pi to that. But that wasn't an answer choice, so yeah, that was a weird one. After working all the others today, I think I think you guys are picking or catching the weirdest set, the weirdest third. Number 18. The graphs of a trig function and a line are given in the plane. The point of intersection occurs where f of x equals b. Okay, yeah, right there. So that's b, that's f of x. For which of the following systems of equations could the point b a be a solution? Oh, wait a minute. So we switched x and y. So let's see. This looks like y equals oops, y equals cosine of x, and this looks like uh, y equals negative b. Or no, that's just b. It's it's below, but it's b. So if I switch x and y, I would have x equals cosine of y and x equals b. And then if I inverse cosine both sides, inverse cosine of x and x equals b. Yeah, you guys definitely got the weirdest of the the weirdest third of the problems. I don't know if that's good or bad. It means the other two thirds aren't aren't as bad. <laughs>